Let's talk airbrush, but for people like you and me. Welcome, my name is Hubert and on this channel I share with you my journey on becoming a better painter after many years without touching a brush. This video is a summary of uh, everything I've learned from my everyday use of the airbrush and I hope it will allow some of you to overcome the fear of using this tool or maybe help you on your future project. I'm not here to sell you anything, I'm just here to share my experience and maybe get some of you to share some of yours in the comments. The goal here is not to become an airbrush god, but rather to just get you started. I think the best way to learn, at least for me, is to practice, so enough talking and let's get to it. I use this Quid Rider as an example. So what you need. If you just want to save some time and money for priming and base coating, just get a cheaper brush like this one. My advice is to start cheap and go at your own rhythm. In time, you will know what works for you and what doesn't. And if you are like me, you will start in time when you need to, searching for more information and knowledge about these tools and little by little you'll get better at the airbrush. The airbrush cannot work alone, so you'll need a compressor and a few other tools. I don't want to get into details here, but the main rule is the same. Start cheap, and when you know what you want or need, you'll know what to do. The yes needs a no to win, again the no. I use a cheap compressor and for now it works great. Cheap brushes for mixing and cleaning. A cleaning pot that also serves as a holder. Thinner, flow improver. And isopropyl alcohol mixed with water for cleaning. Also, don't forget to wear a mask and gloves when doing heavy work. So how to use the airbrush? Let's demonstrate what a typical painting session looks like with the airbrush. I'll start by priming this miniature with black, and this is where I have to tell you, in my opinion, there is no exact science for mixing your paints in order to get the right consistency. You want to get this milky feeling with the, the paint for it to flow nicely. For priming, I generally eyeball it and go for 50% paint and 50% thinner, flow improver and water. Mix everything with a brush or whatever you want. Block the nozzle with a finger and uh, do some bubbles. Helps with mixing and it looks cool. Almost like you actually have an idea of what you are doing. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. Then, you need to get the right pressure, and I usually sit between 15 and 40 psi. Again, I just go for what feels right for me, depending on what I'm doing. And when I first started using the airbrush, I sucked. But with time, I slowly got better at it, especially mixing the paints. You are not retards, so using a double action trigger shouldn't be too difficult, what you want to do is press down for air, pull for juice, release, then up. So the order of what's going through the nozzle is always air, paint, air. That way, less clogging and less cleaning. Time for a quick zenithal on this quick rider. The airbrush is perfect for this and we are then ready to move on to the next step. Cleaning. 
there are three kinds of cleaning for me. When you swap paints, when you are done with your session and maintenance. For example, I now want to swap from red to purple. So I just rinse the airbrush with water, make some bubbles and it's ready to paint again. When I'm done with the session, I just do the same with my mix of isopropyl alcohol and water. Sometimes, especially after priming, I have to use a brush to scrape off some of the remaining paint. And finally, maintenance. Once every few sessions, or just when I'm not feeling lazy, I just take apart my brush and clean everything with my mix. The parts you want to focus on are the needle and the nozzle. And that's it for the airbrush. Now, I just want to briefly talk about the compressor. I've recently started taking care of it. We had a very humid summer this year, so the humidity trap started to work a lot. This meant the tank also captured humidity, so I've taken the habit of purging it and leaving it open between sessions. Just helps with preventing rust from building up. And this is everything I know about this stuff. My main takeaway here is this doesn't mean to be complicated or expensive for it to work for you. It makes painting much more fun for me, and uh, don't worry, you don't have to get good at the brush to start using an airbrush. By the way, I'll be using the same model for next week's video, and it will be about a very special subject. Let's see if you can guess what it is. Now, I hope you enjoyed this one, and maybe you found something useful. Don't hesitate to share your experience and tips with the airbrush in the comments. And uh, as usual, until next time, happy painting!